Hi everybody, this is Barbara. Welcome to my channel, Picky Chick. In today's video, I am going to do a mystery jewelry unboxing. It is with this box, which is a five pound box of jewelry from ThreadUp. It's called their DIY box. I'm a full-time seller on eBay, and one of the things I really love to sell is jewelry. So we're gonna open this box up right now and see what we have inside, and hopefully there will be some items in here that I can list in my online business on eBay. This particular box is from Suwanee, Georgia, and let's see what we've got in here. Let's take a look at the bag of jewelry from the outside before we tear into it. And that's what it looks like. Oh, I got a piece of <laughs> tissue on my arm. There we go. I'm going to just dump it out in this box and then we'll start pulling it out one piece at a time. This first piece I pulled out is a collar necklace and it feels like these are a tagua nut. They're sliced really thin. They have a very nice smooth feel to them. And this one is strung on a, a leather cord. Here is the dark brown leather cord and it's suede on one side and it just ties. There's no name on this one. And by the way, if you see anything that you would like to purchase from this video, you can send me an email at kitsch.barbara.yahoo.com. It's right here on the screen. I also have it down below in the description box. And you can send me an email. Let me know what you're interested in and we'll work something out. You can spot some of these J. Crew pieces from a mile away. This is a classic piece. I love J. Crew though. I like these statement collar pieces. This particular necklace has all clear rhinestone crystal pendants linked together, graduated sizes, and all of the stones are there. That's cool. Here's the oval gold tone chain. It's antiqued. Now, th this side is a little darker than this side. So it might clean up or it just might be that way uh, with age possibly. But there's the lobster clasp and there's the J. Crew tag. Coming out next is this pair of earrings. These are faux turquoise earrings. Kind of got that southwest style to them. And you can see that there is like a little swirl frame around the stone. And these are on lever back ear wires. No maker's mark on these. Those are pretty. I like those. I really love finding matched earrings early on in the unboxing. This is a very pretty pair of Fleur de Lis earrings. They're pierced. They are purple enamel over a gold tone metal. There is what the back looks like. No name on these, but I like them. They're very cute. Here's a unique necklace. It's kind of fun. There are a few things going on with this. Uh, we have some cylinder beads and these round beads that are wooden. And then these guys here, these are fiber beads. We have glass beads as well as seed beads. And then there are these that are made of seed beads. So let me show you closer. There we go. So we have these earthy colors in orange, red, and brown. And then there are other colors, these brighter orange ones and these blue beads are quite interesting, I think. I like this. It's fun and it's different and it's a pretty long necklace. This one does not have a name. It does have a lobster class finish and a, an extender as well. Here is a sterling silver necklace. I know it is. Uh, it feels like it. Um, the magnet, nope, the magnet is not attracted to it. But I need your help. I'm not quite sure how to handle this pendant. It has got an inscription on it and it's on both sides of the pendant. So I'm not sure where to start and how to go, how to read it. So let me try to start where I think maybe I should. Okay, let's start right there. It says, may God grant you, and then it says, always if you try to turn it to keep going always sunbeam warm you i can't figure it out okay 
Okay. Here's where it looks like one of the sentences ends in harm you. So I'm going to start right here. May God grant you, and then you have to turn it. It says always, and then there's a symbol, and then it says sunbeam to warm you, a moonbeam to warm you. I, I, I just don't get it. I, don't, I just don't understand this. And then here it says something about angels, so nothing can harm you. May God grant, and it starts all over. So sorry if I just kept going on and on. I just can't figure this one out. I might have to research this one online. It's definitely sterling silver, though, and very unique, isn't it? There are quite a few bracelets in the lot. This is one of them. This is a wooden bracelet. I see right away that does have a crack in it. I bet you someone could glue that together and it would hardly be noticeable. In any case, it has these little gold studs, sort of look like a Tory Burch logo. It's not, but it's reminiscent of that. So that's going to go in a craft lot. And here is another bracelet. This is a silver tone cuff bracelet and has this braided style. I've seen very similar bracelets like this in these lots. This was in very good shape. It hardly looks worn. Could use a little bit of cleaning, but that's not bad. Next are these two bracelets. These, I believe, are artisan made. This is a pearl and leather design. This particular bracelet here has a lobster clasp closure and has a single pearl charm. And this one does not have a clasp, but the way the pearls are put on there, it's on stretch, so that would fit over the wrist. And then I noticed another leather piece that matches both of those, and that is this leather ring with this one single pearl charm. Oops, and I just broke it. Well, I kind of broke it. This fits in there and then you squeeze it with pliers. So you would just have to make sure that the size works for you because you wouldn't want to put a lot of pressure on that because the same thing could happen with these little uh, closures right here. But uh, it's a cute idea nonetheless, this set right here. Here's a pretty cool necklace. It looks like it's made with beads that have been painted. I think the beads under there are metal, so someone came and painted it with a gold tone spray and black kind of mixed together. It gives like a brass kind of uh, look to the beads. And then it's finished with this braided seed bead going up around the neck. And here is what the clasp looks like. I'm sure there's a name for this type of clasp where it kind of snaps in, but I don't know what that name is. If you do, let me know down in the comment section. Next is this very pretty bangle bracelet. It is a brass bracelet with a yellow enameling and there are these leaf, they actually feel like little charms because there is an epoxy or some kind of layer over this that you could feel the charm underneath. This is very, very pretty. I'm loving it. Let's take a look at another bracelet. This is fun. This is a wooden bracelet that's painted gold. The stretch is a little bit loose on it, so hmm, I'll probably be putting this one in a craft lot. It's really cool. If you've watched my channel for a while, you might know that I love owls. This is such a sweet earring. It's a dangle earring, and it's a colorful enameled owl. So fingers crossed that I find his mate. This entire group here is going in a craft lot. I've got a broken rhinestone earring. I have a separate rhinestone craft lot that I'm creating. But we have shells worn out. The finishes wearing out on some of these pieces. There's a bent bracelet. So all of this is going in the craft. Here's a really super pretty pair of earrings. These are gold tone, like an antique gold tone filigree with these pretty green beads, crystal beads, and they are faceted as well. They're wired to the earring. The earring on the left here does not have an ear wire, which of course is a super easy fix. So I am really digging these. This next pair of earrings is similar to the previous ones. These are kind of a teal green, but they are purposely, I think, worn off to kind of make it look like a patina on there. 
filigree style. I think they're very pretty and both ear wires are attached. So they're nice too. Here comes another bracelet. This one is a brown leather kind of pebbled bracelet. It isn't super soft. It has like a stiffness to it, uh, but I am pretty sure that's leather. If it's not, at least one layer of it is. I can't quite tell. It smells like leather. It really does. No name on it at all, but I do like this embellishment on it. It's gold tone, two gold tone chain, gold tone chains with clear crystal rhinestones going across. I do really like this one. Now this is a gorgeous seed bead necklace, multi-strand, and it's really hard to show while it's laying flat, but I'll do my best. There are these beautiful blue teal colored seed beads mixed with this silver tone arrangement of beads here. Let me just keep pulling this down so you can get an idea. This is so lovely. I've gotten a lot of multi-strand seed bead necklaces, but this one just seems special the way it's made. I love the design. Maybe you can see it better in this shot, but this has a very boho, tribal kind of look to it, and I really like it. It's super long. Now, this one does not have a name on it. It has a lobster clasp finish and an extender. So this is just super cool, I think. Isn't that neat? Here are three tiny little pieces. I dug these out of the bottom of the box. Um, we have three charms here, super close up shots. So let's start with this one. This is a polished silver tone charm bead. Cute, very cute. It's a little crown that says princess. On each side it says princess. So let's take the magnet and there is no attraction. So I will do a test to see if it's sterling silver after the video and I'll put it right now on the screen what the results were. This next bead is the letter M and right there you can see it does have a 925 stamp and ALE stamped on there. You know, ALE indicates that it's a Pandora charm. I will take the magnet to it and see yeah, it feels like sterling silver, so I think we have ourselves a little M Pandora charm there. And then finally, how cute is this little guy? This is a silver frog charm with blue crystal eyes. I love his little smile. This is super cute. Um, there's the hole for the bead, and here's the back of him. And on the back is stamped 925 IBB tie. So this is a sterling silver piece. I don't know what IBB is. Do you guys know? If you do, let me know down in the comment section. But as you can see here, the magnet is not attracted to the metal. So I'm pretty sure that that is sterling silver. He is so adorable. These two pieces here are both going in the craft lot. Even though this is brand new on the card, some of these pearl beads, and they feel like glass, they're messed up. Some of them have really bad scratching in them. Not sure if you can see that. Let's see. That might be a little bit better. So someone can disassemble this and use the beads that are in better shape. And the same with this one. This is actually pretty cool. This is, I think they're plastic, uh, but they feel colder than plastic would feel. I'm not sure. In any case, they have some peeling on just some of the beads. So again, someone could use the good beads on this to create something else. I'm so happy I found the meat to this owl earring. I love these little guys. Here is another charm I just found. It's a silver tone charm, has an antiqued finish on it, and I am not seeing any sort of marking on this. So let me get this magnet out. Okay, the metal is not attracted to the magnet and I will do a test after the video and we'll find out on the screen right now what the results of the test were. This next piece is a very pretty necklace with a Buddha pendant. The Buddha pendant is carved and it's turquoise in color. Don't know if it's real turquoise. We'll take a closer look in a minute. And it's on this ball chain that's a brass tone complete with a little bell. Here's a closer look at that pendant. Isn't that color beautiful? Let's take a look at the other side, and I don't see anything as far as hallmarks there. The chain itself does not have any sort of hallmark. 
or tag except for this little bell. So this is certainly a very pretty one. I like this one a lot. Here's a two-piece matching set, bracelet and earrings. Those turquoise beads I think are real turquoise. They look to be real turquoise. Now as far as the metal components on here, I am not sure. So I've got the magnet here and I'm going to put it on the metal part. And well, we know the ear wire on these are not sterling silver because of that attraction. But the other pieces on here very well could be sterling. I will go ahead and test it and put on the screen right here what I found. Here is an adorable pair of earrings. I'm pretty certain that these are jade. They are carved leaves and they are super sweet. Here is the back view. So I think someone would definitely enjoy wearing these. I'm going to be listing these on eBay. So far this is the only ring I have come across in this lot. I like it. I like the stone. It's kind of got a two-tone blue design in there. I believe it's glass and I like the setting also. Let me make sure this is completely in focus. There we go. I did not see any sort of mark on here as far as a precious metal mark. I don't think it is. I'll go ahead and put the magnet to it. This is definitely magnetic, so not sterling silver. Now I will size the ring and it looks like we have a size six and three quarters. But it's a pretty ring. I think someone would enjoy this. I like the contrast of this bold pendant on this simple cord necklace. This is a glass cabochon. It's oval, it's polished, and it is set in gold tone. And it has this textured, thick, chunky bail here. And I'm noticing that the metal part here is silver tone. So it makes me wonder if maybe someone took a pendant that did not originally come with this necklace. Um, it does have a lobster clasp and a Chico's jewelry tag. If it is married, as they call it, when they mix and match parts, um, I think it's actually a good choice. Here's the back view of the pendant, and it, that is not marked with Chico's that I can see. So maybe it is a married piece, but I like this. I like the contrast of the simple cord with the bold piece here at the end, the pendant. And I think this is another case of a married piece. So yeah, this was an arranged marriage for sure. Uh, the chain I don't think belongs with this pendant. The chain and the pendant are two different color silvers. And this one, this pendant is cute. It's like a locket. It reminds me of Origami Owl, but I couldn't find any sort of Origami Owl marking in there. It's, here's the pendant close up. And, you know, if you know Origami Owl, a lot of times it has this clear frame or clear window and you can open it and put different charms in. And I don't want to open it because already my fingernails are breaking left and right. I got one there. Have you ever had a nail break way under where the skin is? Yikes. So I'm not going to try to open this, but um, it's really cute as far as the pendant goes. And then the chain is this little mini Rolo chain. And it is marked Italy. It has a spring class. So I am pretty sure that that is sterling silver. I am going to take that chain off of this pendant. And if you're an origami owl collector, maybe you can tell me if that really is origami owl or if all the pieces actually would be marked that way. Now I'm starting to be able to make matches. So here are three pair of matched earrings. And let's start with these hoops. This is a pair of gold tone hoops and you can see there are three green stones, teal green, maybe mint green. There are glass stones and they're wire wrapped around the hoop. They're kind of cute. The next pair of earrings are these gold tones. They are dangles and the black that you see is actually thread that's wrapped around that section of the earring. There's a good finish on the gold. It's not worn down and they're kind of fun. They do some dangling. If you can see that, it's hard to show you from the top view, but um, I like these. They're fun. And then finally, we have this pair of dangle earrings. You can see the concentric circles and there's a texture to these circles and they're also in really good shape. 
And I think this is another case of a married piece. So yeah, this was an arranged marriage for sure. Uh, the chain I don't think belongs with this pendant. The chain and the pendant are two different color silvers. And this one, this pendant is cute. It's like a locket. It reminds me of Origami Owl, but I couldn't find any sort of Origami Owl marking in there. It's, here's the pendant close up. And, you know, if you know Origami Owl, a lot of times it has this clear frame or clear window and you can open it and put different charms in. And I don't want to open it because already my fingernails are breaking left and right. I got one there. Have you ever had a nail break way under where the skin is? Yikes. So I'm not going to try to open this, but um, it's really cute as far as the pendant goes. And then the chain is this little mini Rolo chain and it is marked Italy. It has a spring class. So I am pretty sure that that is sterling silver. I am going to take that chain off of this pendant and if you're an origami owl collector maybe you can tell me if that really is origami owl or if all the pieces actually would be marked that way oh i like this necklace so much here's what we have going on we have a sweet little bird pendant it's ceramic and these other stones these cylinder shaped stones are also ceramic in addition we have jasper these brown stones and this stone i am not quite sure of i will put the camera closer to see if we can figure that out this part here is on a brown silk thread and let me show you the toggle clasp that is also ceramic such a cool piece here's the toggle clasp it's a little flower and then the bar fits right in how sweet Here's a nice close-up for you of that pendant. Isn't this the sweetest pendant? On the other side, there is no mark at all. So the artist who made these beads did not sign them. Um, there are the second strand. There's two strands. So the second strand has these jasper beads and these other green beads that I can't quite figure out what they are. Let me give you a, a clearer view of those. And maybe you guys might know what kind of beads those are is such a pretty artisan piece and it's kind of organic too the way the beads on this strand of silk are kind of just tied on there so i'm sure i won't have any problem selling this one this is a very delicate piece it's two tones a little bracelet still with a tag attached right there the cross pendant here is a rose tone gold and it has a teeny tiny crystal right in the center and then there are two very delicate chains and silver tone on each side of that. Now I'm going to take a look because I am noticing that just right next to this lobster clasp here is a little tag with a stamp. There's a look at the tag. Diadema, D-Y-A-D-E-M-A, -E 925 Italy. I am also noticing that the price tag is a TJ Maxx tag and it also says 925 Italy and on the other side it says $32. I'm wondering why they cut part of that off. Here's a closer look at that cross pendant and also the very delicate chain. Here's another bracelet with a cross pendant. I'm loving the color of those faceted crystals there. Very pretty color royal blue um, this one is set in gold tone and it has a pretty texture all around the band and here's how the bracelet opens and closes and i did not see any sort of stamp on this so there is no maker's mark on it but it sure is pretty here's a very pretty statement necklace it's a collar length necklace all clear crystal rhinestones all the crystals are there Fortunately, this one reminds me of a J. Crew style necklace, uh, but this one does not have a maker's mark on it. It's just very lovely. I like this one. Here's a pair of stud earrings. These are starbursts with clear crystals set in gold tone. This does not have any maker's mark on the back, but they're in great shape and they're pretty. Here's a medallion pendant necklace. This is faux leather, it's braided. Uh, silver tone on the end as far as the extender and the lobster clasp but this one is super super lightweight and this is going to end up in the craft lot 
I'm making my way into the earrings now, I'm making matches where I can, and here are some hoop earrings, all made from polymer clay. Very cool. Uh, they're all about the same size. This pair here, this yellow and green pair, are just slightly larger than the rest. A couple more pair of studs. The top ones are chevrons with, you can see, clear crystals set in a gold tone, and that gold tone has some texture to it. And then below that are those pink, like nobium metal type of earrings in a rose. I like those. Those are different. Lo and behold, another owl. I actually have found this exact necklace already. So I have this one in my collection, in my personal collection. So all the crystals are there, very colorful, kind of a bronze tone. And I think he's cute. I'm going to be selling this guy. Here's a pretty piece, great statement piece for the summer, with all white acrylic beads. And this is set in an antiqued gold tone metal. And there is not a maker's mark on this one. Here is another necklace with no maker's mark on it. This has a vintage feel to it. I'm not sure that it is vintage, but it does have a hook closure and there is no stamp or anything on that. The gold finish on the necklace is perfect. There is no wear whatsoever and it's a very pretty deep gold. Now this one has two strands of Rolo style chain and, and then a gold ring. So I love the way it's made. I love the style of it a lot. And it sometimes helps to see a piece up close. Here's a better look at the chain and the links. All of these are going in the craft lot. I'm trying to keep this guy flipped over so you can see what the top looks like, but there's some wear on there. There is a brand new piece with a cross pendant and some lightweight seed beads, but not something I can really sell. There's a nautical uh, themed bracelet with some nautical charms. So it's not usable or sellable for me. It's going in the craft. Here is a seed bead necklace with a knotted end and the color of the beads are brown and copper. It's kind of cool looking and the feel of it is surprisingly heavy in a good way as far as feeling well made. It's not lightweight at all. It looks like each bead is crocheted on there and I like the color of it. Now it looks like on the back of the necklace the beads are getting darker which might be because that is where it touches the skin when it's worn. But other than that, it's in pretty good shape. So I'm not sure if that'll go in the craft not lot or not because of the discoloration on the back. Here is another pair of studs, clear crystals. These remind me of Nadri. I did search and I could not find any marking on them. Here, I'll give you a side view of the way the setting looks. So these are super pretty, very simple and attractive. I like them. If you've never gotten one of these mystery boxes before, then you might not know that this is what happens when you start getting the bigger things out. You're left with all these little things that settle at the bottom. Um, I kind of looked at these quickly. I uh, don't think I'm going to show you one at a time. There might be some more in there as far as pairs go. Um, and I will take the magnet to it. Like right there, I see something that could be gold that I might have missed. And whoops, everything else is coming up. But this is not sticking, so let's take a look at what this thing is. Um, hmm. It's not looking like it's probably gold, but I'll put it aside and I'll put it on the screen if I did find it, but I'm just not going to get my hopes up on that one. But everything else, yeah, that's what it looks like. Now, this is a tiny piece that has me somewhat intrigued. That looks like some sort of stone set in the center there. And there's a little pearl dangle hanging off and a very pretty teardrop shaped gold tone piece that it's all sitting on. I, I think this could be possibly gold, maybe a 10 carat, maybe a gold filled. Uh, but it just looks like a quality piece. Here's what the back looks like. Now there is no stamp on it. So I will definitely be testing this and trying to figure out if it's something, something, something special. Quite a bit of bracelets still left to show you. I like this one. It's a Shambhala style with that adjustable clasp right there. And this is a macrame style where these really bright, bright pretty green faceted crystals are all weaved together. So that's kind of cool. 
The next bracelet I want to show you is this one. This still has a tag on it and the maker is House of Harlow. Now this used to be a very popular brand. Not quite as popular now, but this is such a pretty bracelet. It's silver tone and it's got these clear crystals and little three little arrows or triangles on each end. So yeah, I like this one. Let's keep pulling some bracelets out. Here is one. This is a silver tone bracelet with an inscription. When I count my blessings, I count you twice. So this one is not marked and it feels not really lightweight, but somewhat lightweight. So I'm pretty certain it's not sterling. It's not sticking to the magnet, but I'm pretty confident uh, the way it feels that it is not sterling silver, but it is pretty. It looks brand new. Here's a pretty bracelet. This is kind of different the way it's shaped. Kind of a twisted look and it has a mesh panel in between these two more polished pieces. Now the inside does show some copper so it is worn just on the inside where it touches the skin. But the outside is in very good shape. Next is this chevron zigzag black enamel bracelet. Again, no maker's mark but it's a fun piece. Here's one of those bracelets again that we had earlier with that kind of closure. This is a silver tone piece, has a Celtic design. And again, no markings on this. It feels somewhat lightweight, but it's in great shape. Here is a silver tone bracelet. It's a wire wrap bracelet with these champagne colored faceted crystals. That's kind of neat. And this is a cool bracelet, Louisiana. There's a Louisiana charm there. It's two-toned. It it's got a textured gold tone, round, and then the shape of Louisiana. It's got a faux pearl charm right there. And it's got a brushed silver tone link chain. There's the toggle clasp. So this is in very good shape. Again, this looks, basically, it looks brand new. Here are two cute bracelets. They have that similar closure, that ball slide. This one is just a very simple one. So it has a mini curb chain just all the way around. And then of course it has a, a slider for an adjustable fit. This is really pretty. There are these opalescent beads. I don't believe they're opal, um, but I, I am not sure. Um, and these are probably CZs. I like the style every three and then an opal bead. Cute. There is a box chain for the part that has the slider bead on it. And let's see if I can find any marks on this. There is something right there. Let's see if I can show you the mark on this. There is an end, kind of an italic style end there. So I don't recognize that. I don't think that is Nadri. I've never seen that particular logo before. If you guys might know what that is, could you let me know in the comment section? And I think I saw something on the other side. That, that says China. I'm going to try the magnet on this. Oh, oh, I can't tell if there's, I don't think there's a pull there. I will go ahead and test it. In fact, did I, did I use the magnet on this one? I don't think I did. Let's try. I'll go ahead and test both of them. I'm not getting a pull. Um, it may, they may or may not be sterling silver. You can read your screen right now and I will let you know what I found out. I did find two more rings in this lot. First, there is this one. This is a silver tone ring with the infinity symbol. Just a simple band. Don't see any markings in it. Um, let's take the magnet to it. This is magnetic, but it's in great shape. There's no wear at all, so let's go ahead and size it too. This is a size nine and three quarters. Now let's take a look at the other ring. Silver tone, very polished, and there's an inscription inside. It says, love now and forever. Well, that's sweet, and this looks brand new. This looks like it's never been worn at all. So I am going to try the magnet on this one. This is not magnetic, but it just doesn't feel like sterling silver. It feels like maybe stainless steel. 
and it looks like a large size as well. Let's see what size this is. Yeah, this is a larger size. Let's call this, this is a size 11 and a half. Oops, let's get back into frame there. Here is a J. Crew piece with ivory and black pendants, and it's topped with a clear pendant and two grayish pendants on each side of each pendant. This one is set in gold tone, and it appears that this side of the necklace on the chain is darker than this side of the necklace. So not sure why, it might just need a cleaning. There is a jewelry tag on this one, and that does say J. Crew. Here is a better look at the pendants up close. A few more pair of studs, all crystal studs. You know, it's kind of tricky holding all these in between your fingers. <laughs> I'm getting better at it. But um, these are, of course, gold color crystals and they have more of a, is that a hematite? Yeah, I think that's more of a dark gunmetal hematite setting. These are, whoops, see, I shouldn't have spoken so quickly. Um, so these are set in silver tone and then these black little crystal ones are set in gold tone. Couldn't find any marks on these either, but they are really pretty. Here are three more pairs, and all of these have faceted crystal rhinestones in them. These are really cool. I like the idea of a little round faceted crystal inside of a square frame. These are a neat color green. It has like a, I guess they are Aurora Borealis. Here, let me show you up close. Yeah, I would say those are Aurora Borealis. I like that green a lot. And here is that pair in the middle, clear crystals, oval shaped cabochon, and that's topped with like three little leaf shaped embellishments. Aren't these fun? These are little antler earrings with a red stone. Very sweet, great Christmas earrings. And look, I found the match to the earrings we saw earlier that I thought could be Nadri. This is the exact match. I'll pull the earrings out and show you. Um, in the meantime, um, I see a little tab on there that does have a mark. I'll keep really still and hope that you can see at least part of that. The bottom it says P-A-J and on the top it says 925 Italy. Again, I will check uh, the magnet on it, and it looks like, except for the spring clasp, which is very common, it's not magnetic. And then I'm going to turn this little guy over. Okay, well, I am seeing 925 PAJ China. So somebody got some spleening to do <laughs> because this one says Italy and this one says China. So, okay, well, let's just say the chain and the pendant just don't go together. Um, I also saw CZ on the back. I forgot to point that out. Now here are, here's one of the earrings anyway. So this is definitely an exact match if I can get this to focus a little bit better. So that, they're cute actually. They're in great shape. So that could be sold as a set or not. How fun is this necklace? This is a multi-strand necklace, five strands bright bright red beads some of them are faceted some are smooth they are plastic check out that starfish all the crystals are there on each arm and the center has a faux turquoise bead i really like this this is really fun and unique you know i have to show you this one up close i'm in love with this necklace um, it does have some wear but just at the very end let's see if i can show you so the lobster clasp, it's an oversized lobster clasp, has some wear on it where it's supposed to be gold toned, but some silver is showing through. And then maybe I'd say somewhere on this extender. I'm surprised that there's not a maker's mark on this one. This is such a lovely piece. It's a lot of fun. It's very unique. And I would certainly wear this. That does it for today's Mystery Jewelry Box unboxing, guys. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today. Let me know what you thought about this box down in the comments section. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.